Yeah, I finally got myself a Steam Deck. Your games are going places, it says. Let's find out. Let's have a look at the Steam Deck next. So guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So when you get your Steam Deck, this is what you're actually greeted with. You pretty much get this box um, that includes the case, which is a really nice case, and the actual Steam Deck itself. And, and it's an absolute beast. Also in the box you get your USB-C charger, and that's it. Let's have a look at the Steam Deck itself without any faffing about with unboxing. Okay, so when you get your Steam Deck, this is pretty much what you're greeted with. It's an absolute beast. I don't think any sort of videos is going to do this justice, to be honest. But I'll give it a quick size comparison to some devices that I actually have. And this is the RG552. Um, and it's obviously dwarfed in comparison. And this is quite a big device. Also, probably a better comparison um, is probably the Nintendo Switch. As you can probably see here, the Nintendo Switch OLED option is pretty comparable in size. Um, the screen size is pretty similar. Um, obviously, what's different here is the massive um, certain controllers on the side. But yeah, that gives you a, a slight idea to what the size is like of the Steam Deck. It is pretty massive and it's pretty heavy as well. Certainly, it's a lot more heavier than the Nintendo Switch is. It's one beast of a device, that's for sure. Okay, so this is the 64 gig version of the Steam Deck. Now, obviously when I first heard about the Steam Deck, I kind of dismissed it because of the price. Now, the high-end model, the 512 gig version, is £569. Now, immediately, I would dismiss that. That is crazy money. However, at first consideration, and looking at the sort of markets that they are in, sort of Neo models, for example, and maybe even the Win 600, I think the Steam Deck 349 base model at 64 gig is actually a pretty good deal. You can actually add your own memory card, as you can see down below. So it's probably cheaper to actually buy the basic model and add your own memory card. So I've added my own memory card here. It was a 256 gig memory card, and that only cost me £25 to add. That just made more sense to me than buying any of the other models. You can obviously get a bigger memory card and add that as you see fit if you want more games, for example. Um, but for me, that's the basic model. But yeah, for me, the basic model is definitely the one to go for. I don't think it's worth splashing that extra cash because all you get is a slightly better screen, anti-glare screen, and more memory. You can really just add a memory card. Save yourself a couple of hundred pound into the process. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the actual Steam Deck before we rub it on too much more. So on the front here, you can see you've got dual speakers on either side and the sound on this is very very good you've got your steam button that gives you access to steam and all the different options and settings these are two sort of track pads uh, sort of acting as your mouse and mouse buttons for example to help you track in the absence of a keyboard and mouse this is an options button you sort of click that it gives you access to different settings options and stuff and you've got your dual analog sticks and they both click in as well they actually feel really nice you could probably get some cover for them to give a little bit more grip but i've not really had any issues you've also got a d-pad on the side here as well um, you've also got this kind of a menu button kind of thing up here and this is acts as a start button up here this button here and you've got your usual a b x y now they do these do seem a little bit small they're not nintendo switch small but they are functional and i've not had any issues with them at all you can see on the top here you've got your l2 and r2 buttons these feel really nice these triggers you've got your volume headphone socket and you've got a vent here this thing does heat up massively and um, that's your USB-C charging slot you've got your power on and off button and your other triggers on the other side now interestingly enough you also have some additional buttons on the back here and um, these are R4, R5 and L4 and L5 buttons um, and these are alright they kind of add a little bit of functionality to the device um, but sometimes I feel I accidentally press them um, in games which might be a bit of a problem, I guess. But you've also got another vent on the back here because this thing definitely needs it. It heats up. It does get very warm. And sometimes this one does get covered up a little bit um, when you're playing, if you're maybe leaning it on your cushion or something or your belly, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so there is two vents um, and it does heat up. But it's not been a major problem for me so far. Anyway, let's get this device um, switched on and let's see what it's capable of doing. 
okay, once you've actually turned your Steam Deck on, you will have to set up an account um, on Steam. You can do it on the Steam Deck itself, it's not a problem. If you've already got an account, just put in your details. It might be a good idea to actually go ahead before you've pre-ordered, or once you've pre-ordered it, to set up a Steam account. But don't go ahead and download too many games, because it's not clear on the actual website or app which games are actually compatible with the Steam Deck. So be wary of not adding too many games before you've actually got your Steam Deck. Um, but once you've set up, it's very simple, it's not too difficult at all. Um, so once you get this, once you're set up, you obviously want to go and try and download some games to it. You can do this directly on here, you can do it on the app, you can do it on your laptop. It doesn't really matter how you actually add the games. Um, but let's show you, this is obviously the home. Press the Steam button, it gives you access to a few different options here. You've got your library, all the games that you've got on your account. Um, if you go to the left, it tells you the games that are absolutely great and run without any problems on your Steam Deck. Now if we actually go into the store, I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go back to the Steam button, go down to store, it should take you directly to the store. Now obviously you need to make sure you're connected to your Wi-Fi. That's obviously one of the first things you'll do as you're uh, going through the setup. Now see on the left hand side here, this is, tells you the games that are great on the Steam Deck and run with any without any problems at all. Now this is perfect if you're looking for games that are having no issues when running and they will run perfectly. However, that doesn't mean you can't play other games here. For example, let me go to the actual store home. You can actually use the touch screen function as well. Um, on here, so if you look at one of these games, there are different options. You can see this one's got a question mark next to the um, sort of Steam Deck button that basically says it's unknown if it will play or not. So it's up to you whether you take that risk and actually playing the game. Now I find that a lot of these games actually run fine, um, but obviously be wary of that. I maybe want to test that out or check out before you actually start playing it. This one's obviously green. Let's have a look. There's one that says it's unsupported, so this one's got a sort of circle on it, which means the game's completely unsupported and it will not play on your Steam Deck at all. So do not try to download that and play it. There are quite a few games of these um, on the Steam Deck. Um, obviously this one is a VR game, it will not, not play on the Steam Deck. But there are other options where games just won't run um, for various reasons. Um, and hopefully this will get fixed uh, in future where Valve are definitely working on a lot of these games. You look, this one's got a yellow sort of eye button. That means it's playable. However, you may come across some issues such as, generally it's about text, being able to read small text, for example, or it may require extra sort of functionality with virtual keyboards and mouses, for example. But you can actually uh, use the Steam button and X to bring up the keyboard and use this as a mouse. So it's not a major problem, but just be wary of that. But these games are playable and you should probably play them without any massive issues even though it does say that. It's just giving you that warning that it's not perfect for the Steam Deck. So yeah, once you get yourself set up, you really obviously want to go down and sort of start downloading some games. There are free to play games as you can see here. You can play Apex Legends on the Steam Deck and it's completely free. Just have a browse, there's a lot of cheap uh, games as well that you can sort of download, you can download demos as well. Now this option, this is for adding your friends and chat, much like you would do in other consoles. Media, any sort of downloads, uh, sort of screenshots you may have take, taken. Downloads, this tells you the progress of any of your downloads. And um, this is just all the different settings that you can have here. Um, a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory. There are obviously click the internet, notifications you may want to mess about with that now brightness and stuff in different settings you may want to adjust might help with the battery life i found the battery life to be maybe around four to five hours however if you're playing some really intensive games that might lessen to about one to two hours i've noticed the battery life does go down a lot quicker if you're playing a sort of heavier intensified game for example you've got different audio settings you can connect bluetooth you can connect your um Keyboard, mouse, headphones, exa for example, um, controller, um, rumble and haptics. You can maybe disable them if you want to make sure your battery life lasts a little bit longer. You get different options for your keyboard, friends and chat, downloads, lots of different options here. Cloud, enable Steam Cloud. This is for maybe synchronizing up your save states, for example. Family, remote play, interesting stuff. And this basically tells your storage. You can clearly see here, I've got the internal storage 
um, is obviously quite tight at the moment. We need to move some of that onto the micro SD card. And micro SD card is also up here as well. You can see what games are installed on which. Um, I'd probably recommend getting a slightly bigger memory card than I've actually got here. Probably get as big as you can at a reasonable affordable price. The 256 gig price was about £25, which I think is pretty reasonable. As soon as you double that, you're probably looking at 40 to 50 and then maybe looking at one terabyte could be anything up to um, over £100 maybe. You may need to stay, uh, sort of shop around. I wouldn't get any cheap ones, to be honest. It's really up to you, but I wouldn't recommend it. So that's all the options on the Steam. If you look at this uh, sort of side button here, it just gives you some extra options um, to help with performance uh, and different, obviously, see who you your friends are, chat to them, add some settings here you can even mess about with frame uh, rate limits and here refresh rates that you may need to mess about with when you're playing some games to get better performance out of it's all a bit of testing to be honest um, and see what works for you and um, so there are different buttons here but let's get into some games um, and see how the actual performance so guys if you hold down the steam button itself it brings up some of the shortcuts that are available to you um, and you may need to memorise that if you don't want to add your own keyboard for example and mouse which I think is just a bit of a, a hassle this is what you'll actually see so the ones you probably want to memorise most is one they want you to hold uh, the keyboard or bring up the keyboard which is steam and x um, and any time you want to move the, the sort of mouse you want to maybe hold the steam button down and use that uh, trackpad here to sort of manoeuvre about and if you want to select something you use the trigger buttons at the top here pretty straightforward it's pretty simple going to start with half-life as the first game to play here the classic half-life from valve themselves so you can see here it's obviously it says it's playable rather than being great and i think it's really just down to some of the text and it's got you a little tip here to sort of magnify some of the text that you might see on the screen I mean, generally it's probably not completely great because you need to access the sort of on-screen mouse to sort of select the options here on the screen. So basically you just need to hold down the Steam button and choose your option, such as load game. Load in the last one and that's it. That's as easy as that. I'm just selecting it by the trigger button on the back here. And here we have Half-Life working on the Steam Deck. Definitely one of my all time favourite PC games and this is when I actually got into PC gaming back in the late 90s um, and it was a great time for PC gaming, such amazing games such as this and Deus Ex but I found PC gaming just to be a little bit expensive to try and keep up with the latest sort of graphics cards etc but you can see this works absolutely brilliant on here and this is definitely one of the games um, I'm going to be playing a lot of in the next few days. Absolutely brilliant. I've not got the, the sound too high, but the sound is phenomenally good. If you've never played this game, this is a great place to start. It's not even too expensive. Obviously, it is over 20 years old, but it still looks and plays fantastically well. Anyway, I'll give you a quick tip to sort of jump out this game, press the steam button and then you can sort of exit this game by doing this here and um, there are other different options here, you can see you've got your um, controller settings um, on the screen here, you can mess about with that and change it if you wish but anyway to exit this game just exit, you, you don't want to start another game until you've exited that one um, and what I'm going to do now is play the second Half-Life game which it says it's great on Steam Deck it's basically more of the same but it's just a little bit of a step up the graphics have definitely improved somewhat over the original i think half-life 2 was a good few years um after the original and sadly we are still waiting on half-life 3 which well i really love it haven't played half-life alex vr unfortunately but yeah this is a phenomenal game as well if you've never played these games guys i would get started these are great games to start off playing on your steam deck Absolutely phenomenal games. Oh, he's going to help me with that. Wow. So, okay, I can turn up the sound a little bit to give you an idea what it sounds. I've got it quite low, but if this is it sort of boosted up, gives you an idea how decent the sound is on this device.
Okay, obviously you can utilise the touch screen as well, but it's probably just a habit of not doing it. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at some other games that I've got here. This is a fairly recent game, and it's a kind of a Metroidvania style uh, game called Dark Light. It's fairly newish, and it really works and runs well on the Steam Deck. Also, if you're a fan of uh, the Metroid sort of games, then this will be right up your street. I think one of the, the most sort of direct competitors to the Steam Deck is obviously other devices like Iron Neos um, and even the Nintendo Switch. I mean, there's a lot of games you could find on here that are on the Nintendo Switch as well. However, I feel always that the Nintendo Switch, especially the controllers you get with it, are probably designed for a smaller child rather than um, sort of adults. Um, but yeah, the Steam Deck, you see, it's definitely better designed, it's definitely chunky, it's quite heavy. Through prolonged play, I think it might get a little bit sore holding it um, for a while, but I think most of the time I'm going to be leaning it on a cushion or your knee or something, rather than actually playing it like this and holding it. You're never really going to do that. It's a really nice game, very good atmosphere. It is pretty hard though, but it's very nice looking. Plays fantastically well. Definitely feels like a PC game when you're actually playing it. There's sort of so many options and different settings that you can sort of utilise. And see, graphically it looks fantastic. It's pretty decent. You can see here the graphics are absolutely fantastic. It's got a great atmosphere, great sound. Uh, controls are really tight, really enjoyable. Very hard though, so it's a really tough game. You see some of the text is a little bit small, funny, uh, surprisingly enough you can see down here, so crazy that they've said this is completely playable. Some of the text and stuff is a little bit tiny. It's obviously where you start proper, get some enemies to slash, <laughs> defeat. Lots of collectibles, lots of pickups, the usual stuff that you see in a lot of these sort of style games. Well, it's really good fun. And it's, it's certainly a, a very high challenge. So guys, I think we'll move on to a, a slightly more sort of high intensified game, such as Metroid Exodus, which I've downloaded. That's a fairly new game as well, and it runs really well on the Steam Deck. So the Metro games are basically set in some kind of a war-torn sort of world, you know, many years in the future. And I think this is the third game in the series. Um, I really enjoyed the first game in the series, didn't really play too much of the second one, but they look fantastic. Graphically, absolutely phenomenal. Certainly shows off your Steam Deck really well. Let's just continue the game with where we are. I was just a little bit into the game just after the sort of introductory sort of stages. Um, it does look really nice. It plays particularly well. I've not seen any massive issues of slowdown. You can obviously utilise the options uh, by going in here and maybe dropping down the frame rate, for example, and get a little bit of better performance. But it seems to play pretty well. these ruins <sighs> see all the destruction and Moscow had the best anti-air defenses in the country if this is how it looks now imagine how the rest of the world looks great little game performs really well on here I definitely highly recommend it see it looks really decent doesn't it and plays really well anyway let's move on to another game guys so we're going to play Need for Speed Heat, which says it's uh, playable, but it seems absolutely fine. I'm not really sure what the massive issues are with this game. This probably isn't the best driving game you'll ever play. It's, it seems like kind of a cross between Forza and Grand Theft Auto, sort of, a, but it's not really anywhere near as good as either of them. So certainly uh, be wary of it. It's okay if you can get it cheap. It's reasonably okay. It's a nice game, it looks really good, but the, the handling isn't particularly brilliant on it. What I hear, neither are you. That's what I want to talk about. I'm thinking we can help each other. Form a crew? Unless you got any better offers on the table. You can hear the haptic feedback and stuff and the rumbling on that as it's leaning on here. You can probably hear it rumbling on the table. Pretty nice game, but the handling's a little bit iffy, but it's certainly worth a play. I've def I've found this sort of racing is pretty hard though.
you'd probably rather play Forza. Um, but you can do that if you've got the Ultimate Xbox Game Pass. You can link up your games on there and play them on the Steam Deck as well. Not entirely sure how that works, but if you have that option, you can play your Xbox games on here, which is pretty cool. Now, sometimes when I've played some games, they have crashed um, and not closed properly, which is a bit weird. Um, it's not happened very often, but it definitely has happened. I've really had to reset the whole unit to sort of get started. Even sometimes going down to the power option here. It's not helped, I've not been able to access it. You can shut down, restart. You can see here that's sort of struggling a little bit, but yeah, I need to sort of close this game, you know, which has been a pain. Okay, guys, I think we've seen enough of sort of high end game. We're going to have a quick look at. Oh yeah, we'll have a look at Return to Monkey Island as well. That's a fairly new game and it actually runs really well on here. That's a really nice game. And it seems to utilise, you can obviously move your characters. It's a point and click classic game, but you just utilise down through the I options. In the back. <laughs> the humour is funny. Plays fantastically well. If you like the Monkey Island series, you'll love this game. Excuse me. Yes. Will you pretend to be our parents again? What do you mean, again? Run along and find your real parents. Let's be frank. You can never hope to beat me. No way. You'll never catch up to my <laughs> level. I win. Such I a cool win. game. Plays brilliant on the Steam Deck. Obviously, you can play this on other uh, sort of formats now, but it's originally a PC game, wasn't it? I think that's one of the things I'm sort of got this for is to play games that I've not really got on other formats, and um, obviously there are games on the Steam library that you can't play anywhere else. This is one option here, which is Pixel Cup Soccer. Um, and it's really good fun. Let's have a bash at it. Okay, Pixel Cup Soccer. Eh? Sounds crazy, but you know something? It works really well. I'm using touchscreen instead of the buttons here, which is weird. <laughs> it's such a fun little game. Um, I think it's a shame that it's not really available in other formats. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I find it more fun to play than the latest FIFA game. <laughs> I love it, it's superb. It kind of almost feels like schoolboy football with all the players running into the ball. Yay! It's absolutely superb. So guys, I think one of the best things about the Steam Library, there are thousands and thousands of games on there. Obviously not all of them will be playable. There's some great little retro games as well, which I've really loved. I really enjoyed playing Curse to Golf. It plays fantastic on here. Um, and also playing some games such as uh, Tapeworm Disco Puzzle, um, which is fantastic. Even playing the sort of Portal game. You can play Among Us as well. Um, but it may not run perfectly. Um, also, let's have a quick look at retro gaming and then I'll show you uh, something about the MU deck, um, which is obviously playing old style retro emulation games on Emulation Station. Let's have a look at Always Legacy first. I love the way it utilises the full screen, it's absolutely fantastic. The screen is really good. It's not working at full 1080p right enough, but the quality is still absolutely fantastic. And definitely something great about the Steam uh, sort of library. There are so many games. There's thousands of games. It's going to be difficult to find them all. So guys, if you've got a game out there that you want me to play, especially retro game style, let me know so I can have a look at it. I'm interested in any of these games. There's so many great games out there that I really want to sort of discover them. Um, it's difficult to find all of them because there are literally thousands and thousands of games out there. This is quite a cool little game. Always Legacy. Obviously, if you follow me or regarding Evercade, then um, we're getting Evercade version of Always Awakening coming really soon. I think it's uh, going to be November now that it's going to be on the Evercade, and it plays a little bit similar to this, to be honest. But yeah, this is a cool little game. So what I'm going to do now is jump off this, 
and we'll have a look at Emulation Station. Okay guys, so if you look at my game collections here, you can scroll right along and you can see I've got non-Steam games here, which is basically a lot of emulators that I've added through the Emu Deck uh, option. You can see here I've got a few games here that I've sort of downloaded um, that you can actually play, like God of War on the PSP and Metroid Prime on the GameCube. Now how to do that, you have to go through a process to install Emu Deck onto your Steam Deck, which is utilised by pressing the Steam button. Um, and then you need to get into sort of desktop mode, so you go down to switch to desktop and this is what you get it basically switches this to a more sort of familiar PC mode, now this is where you may want to connect a keyboard and mouse or you can just utilise the settings here um, so hold down the steam button to move the cursor and then use the sort of trigger buttons to select options. Now you need to go onto the website um, to download and install MU Deck, which I've obviously already got here, but I'll leave the link in the description, I'm not going to show you how to actually do it. There are other um, sites out there and written guides that will help you install this on your Steam Deck, and then you can install games um, from retro so a gaming from anything from Mega Drive all the way up to GameCube, Xbox for example um, but one thing that doesn't mention too much in the guide is how to actually install your games on here now you can download them from here as well or from your favourite site or if you've got them saved on like OneDrive or something um, your own sort of games however the best way is probably by connecting a a USB-C friendly sort of hard drive or something as an extra device so that you can then copy the games across from the hard drive to your device. Now not everyone has them, you may need to buy one of them if you don't have it but it, I didn't find an easier way to do it other than that. But what I'm going to do is guys jump back on to the Steam Deck front end and I'll show you some of the games working that I've managed to get playing. Um, but yeah it's not the most straightforward, so word of warning if you're doing this, it's not the most straightforward thing to use um, if you're sort of interested in doing that. There are sort of different options here. If I jump in, so the Steam ROM manager, and it does look kind of a complicated. And this is where you've got all your different um, sort of options down the side here. Um, and it's not the easiest, you can obviously use this to sort of get your games to show up on your Steam Deck. Um, as actual games rather than just being used within emulation station it's really up to you what you prefer but anyway what I'm going to do is get back to um, the front end you can follow the guide if you want to do this to return to gaming mode you just press this option up here double click and we'll return to the Steam Deck so you can see here I've got the games that I can actually just choose from my library here but you can obviously play them through emulation station as well so what that's what I'm actually going to do just now and show you what that's like. Um, if you've ever used Emulation Station, you'll be familiar with what you see here. Now, again, you can sort of download your gaming art from this way using Scraper, Screen Scraper. You need to set up an account. So it's ScreenScraper.fr um, on your computer. Just go on there, set up an account, and then you can put in the details in here, and then you can then start scraping all your sort of videos and game art. For example, I've got a few games here, um, Jagger games, don't run particularly great, Nintendo 64 seemed okay, not perfect, um, Gamecube games that I've got here was running fantastic, Saturn fine and PSP amazingly well which I'm going to play right now to show you this actually working absolutely fantastic. Now I've played this game on many a device recently and most of the devices struggle like crazy to actually play it and as you can see on this one this looks even better than the original PSP, PS Vita and it plays fantastically well which has absolutely blown me away. You can see there's no issues with the frame rates um, and absolutely fantastic play. It's not got any slowdown. I'm very impressed indeed. So if you're into so your um, so a retro gaming, this has definitely got to be an option. Yes, it's quite expensive, but it's a very good option, that's for sure. Okay, this is uh, GameCube, Metroid Prime. And this um, also plays fantastically well, as you'll probably see in a little second. 
once you get used to the actual controls that is but it was obviously a problem even playing it on the GameCube the controls were a little bit of a pain that's just my opinion obviously but see here absolutely fantastic whoa Just remember to lock on to things yeah it plays absolutely brilliant It's absolutely blown me away to be honest. I'm really looking forward to maybe getting uh, stuck into some um, sort of GameCube games again. Um, it's been a long time since I've been able to play GameCube games this well. It certainly impressed me. I'm not saying every game is going to play well, but I think the Steam Deck definitely holds massive um, possibilities of playing some of these games again. Um, it might be one of the best options out there, that's for sure. It certainly beats a lot of the Anbernic models that I've been playing recently. Okay guys, now my summary of the Steam Deck. Now so far I've really enjoyed having the Steam Deck. It's been nice to actually play some games on PC that I've never really played before. And some games such as Metroid Prime here that I've not really been able to play for years. So I definitely highly recommend it. If you've got a really large Steam library, then this is going to be perfect for you to play these games on the go as it were, it's not really a pocket sized machine and um, it is rather large, it does heat up a bit, the battery life isn't particularly great but it's still a fantastic machine, it's not perfect however it does have a lot going for it, you can see here it's absolutely fantastic, very well built and I'm really looking forward to sort of discovering more things about it, I've really enjoyed it, I hope you'll enjoy the video please like, subscribe and we'll catch you again in the next one, bye for now